Well, now to a Fox News exclusive. As Iran's deputy foreign minister this morning says this country will not renegotiate the nuclear deal reached with the six world powers, including the United States. Sources say President-elect Trump has received this hand-delivered letter. It's signed by 23 former top U.S. officials urging a new approach to Tehran. It calls on the incoming Trump administration to engage and work with the Iranian opposition, something previous administrations apparently haven't done. It is signed by a range of bipartisan officials such as Rudy Giuliani, former Senator Joe Lieberman, former Attorney General Michael Mukasey, and the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff under President Clinton, General Hugh Shelton, among others. It says, quote, President Obama expressed the hope that nuclear negotiations would induce Iran's leader to act with greater consideration of American interests. It is now clear that Iran's leaders have shown no interest in reciprocating. Iran's rulers have directly targeted U.S. strategic interests, policies, and principles, and those of our allies and friends in the Middle East. To restore American influence and credibility in the world, the United States needs a revised policy. John Bolton, former ambassador to the United Nations, senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute and Fox News contributor, joins us now. He has supported the Iranian opposition. Uh, ambassador, with this letter, what type of uh, revised policy are they calling for, and what type of new policy do you think we need? Well, I think the basic problem here, of course, is the regime of the Ayatollahs uh, in charge in Tehran. It's been the problem since the uh, Islamic Revolution of 1979. Uh, people talk about Islamic terrorism. They refer to ISIS or al-Qaeda. Let's make it clear what the real source of support for terrorism around the world. It's the regime in Tehran. They're the world's central banker. They fund Hezbollah. They fund Hamas. They fund plenty of others, uh, and they're well on the road to developing nuclear weapons. And I think what the signatories of this letter are trying to say, and, and just to underline how bipartisan the group is, you, you don't see a lot of that in Washington. We haven't for the past eight or ten years. So this is, I think, a very significant gathering of people to say the real problem here is the regime in Tehran. It's unpopular. Uh, it sits in power because of its uh, control over the Revolutionary Guards Corps, the besieging militia, and others. We saw what happens when people try to express their opposition in the summer of 2009, the fraudulent election there stolen for Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. The people went into the streets. The besiege and the Revolutionary Guards Corps crushed them. The Obama administration did nothing. So I think what's being offered here is to say, look, there is an opposition uh, in Iran. Uh, it's a lot of different pieces, like all opposition movements. Uh, uh, a lot of the groups don't get on well together, but let's let's be clear. There is an alternative to the Ayatollahs, and if you want to make them more amenable to serious negotiation where they might actually do something, just remind them that their time in power is not eternal. You know, Mr. Trump has shown himself, if nothing else, to be an ortho unorthodox when it comes to foreign policy. I I'm thinking of the phone call with the president of Tehran. What would the message be and reaction in Tehran? be if Mr. Trump did reach out or, or the opposition reached out and they had a phone call or, or, or they met? Well, I think uh, just as you mentioned the call of the president of Taiwan, it would have a remarkable effect. Look, I think the United States ought to feel free to speak to whomever it wants to speak to if it's in the best interest of the United States. That doesn't mean you speak to everybody, but it does mean you pick your shots. And just because uh, the government in Beijing doesn't like it when we talk to the Taiwanese, just as I'm sure the Ayatollahs will not be happy at all to, uh, for President Trump or members of his administration to talk to the Iranian opposition, the National Council for Resistance. That, that should not deter us. If anything, that should make us uh, more interested in finding out what we can do to help the legitimate opposition in Iran from whatever perspective they come from. After the Ayatollahs disappear, uh, into the ash heap of history. We can have elections in Iran. Uh, we're a long way away from that. There's no guarantee the Trump administration will take this up. But I just uh, I think it's very important, again, to underline what a bipartisan group of people we have here. It's so unusual in Washington. Uh, I hope it gets the attention that it deserves. Yeah, and finally, who would that opposition be? I, I mean, many of the signatories are, are supporters in the letter itself calls for uh, uh, reaching out to the National Resistance, uh, uh, National Council of Resistance of Iran. It's a group that many of the signatories support. You've spoken at their Paris rally uh, for several years. Uh, do you think, and what would the reaction be, that that would be a group to reach out to Mr. Trump, that he potentially could have a meeting, and, and that is the opening, or could be the opening of the door, to the Iranian resistance? 
Yeah, I, I think this is a group that deserves very serious attention. Uh, they've got a platform for what their uh, government in uh, a post-Ayatollah Iran would look like, and it's a, it pledges, most importantly to me, a non-nuclear uh, weapons Iran. Uh, it's uh, open on the question of uh, women's rights in a way, for example, the Ayatollahs would never even consider. It's led by a woman. Uh, so th it has a lot of, uh, I think, attractions for Americans who are looking for an alternative. There are other alternatives, too. But I think the real point is to say we do not have to accept the Ayatollahs as the legitimate voice of everyone in Iran because they are not. They are the true illegitimate regime. The NCRI has been controversial, but certainly this seems to open the door to engaging the opposition and the resistance at some point. Uh, we'll see what comes of it. Ambassador John Bolton, as always, thank you for your insight.